Hey, welcome to the Horsepower Shop and the return of our Project LS gun. A few weeks ago, you might recall, we had to remove the engine from our 98 Camaro to do some troubleshooting before we could add some performance upgrades. Now, I gotta tell you, this was one unique exercise in engine extraction. The LS1 comes out from the bottom. So using the two post lift in the truck shop, we got the car in the air and went to work. Bringing up the motor on top and on bottom before we could roll it out from under the body. Then back in the horsepower shop, we completely tore down the engine and we discovered a spun rod bearing. Now, since we want our motor to be in perfect condition for the power upgrades we got planned, we sent it off for professional machining at a place called Wheel to Wheel. That's where the LS1 block gets completely machined and the reciprocating assembly fully balanced. And here's our block back from the machine shop and ready to be reassembled. Now, oiling is really critical on an LS1, so we're using bearings that feature a grooved upper half rather than a three-quarter or a full grooved set. Now, we're using Clevite 2199s in standard and a thousandths oversize, which allows us to mix and match these bearing halves to get the one and a half to two thousandths clearance that we're after. Now, that dimension is really crucial here on the center thrust bearing, which is where it's located here on the LS1. Now, if those dimensions sound a little bit tight to you, well, they are. And that's because we're using an aluminum block that expands and contracts at a whole different rate than a cast iron one does. We had planned to just get our stock crank ground, but after we mic'd it, well, we discovered it was too far gone. So we're going to replace it with this GM piece that's been balanced along with the rest of our rotating assembly and check out how the journals have been polished and the oiling hose chamfered. Now, if Chuck's done his job over there with the bearings, I can drop this baby in place. Well, I've got the assembly lube on the bearings. Okie doke, here she goes. Now we can install the main caps over the ARP studs. We're going to torque those studs to 60 on the inners, 50 on the outers. Now, the rest of the reciprocating assembly from wheel to wheel includes a set of these Molly Forge aluminum pistons. Now, they've got a 9cc reverse dome here to help get that compression ratio down for the blower that we're going to be using later. And they also have a special coating here on the skirt to help reduce friction and another one up here on the face of the piston to help hold heat inside the combustion chamber and of course that is going to help us make more power. Now the ring pack, well it's a low friction set also from Molly. Since we're adding boost later we're going to set the gap a little on the loose side at 23 thousandths on the top ring, 25 thousandths on the second and on the oil ring. Hey, while my partner finishes gapping those rings for our pistons, let me show you the rods we're going to hang them on. Now, these are Cali's H-beams that have been profiled and peened, and the small ends have been bushed for a floating pin. The big ends are held together by ARP cap screws for strength and reliability, and they'll be torqued to 50 foot-pounds. Hey, that sounds like a pretty bulletproof combination, huh? Now, for valve train, we went with Crane all of the way, starting with this billet roller here. Now, this thing specs out at 551 lift on both sides with a 216 duration on the intake, 224 on the exhaust. Of course, both of them are measured at 50 thousandths lift. Then we added a set of their hydraulic roller lifters. And for rockers, hey, you know what? It's pretty hard to beat these Crane gold rollers here, and we spec them out with a 1-8 ratio. Finally, we added a set of the compatible springs and a set of their titanium retainers. Now, these things are pretty cool. What they're going to do is take a little bit of mass out of the valve train, give us a couple hundred more usable RPM. Now, we're going to show you how everything goes together right after the break, so stick around. We are back to work on the LS gun buildup on our way to making a potent street fighter out of this popular small block. Well, with the bottom end all buttoned up, we can move on to installing this roller camshaft, which has a more aggressive grind than our stocker to match the power plants we have for this engine down the road. 
You know, our new valve train includes stiffer valve springs, so we need a high-quality timing set like this one from Crane. Now, check it out. It's a double roller piece that uses billet steel sprockets here. In fact, the top one is adjustable. You can run it up to 4 degrees advanced or retarded. Now, let me show you something else. This is our stock timing set just compared to the crane set up here. And when you say that's a worthwhile upgrade? <laughs> yeah, let me have that. <laughs> now, to adjust the timing, all you got to do is loosen up these bolts right here. You move the cam to wherever you want it, then you cinch them back down again. On the back side, the crane setup uses a Torrington bearing, and what that does is keeps the camshaft from walking, and it keeps the sprocket from gouging out your block. Now, I've already made the adjustments that we need to install our camshaft straight up. Oiling's critical with the LS1, so anytime you make power upgrades, you also need to upgrade your oil pump. Now, we did that by first removing this plug and adding a 70 thousandths shim under the spring inside here to increase the pressure. Then we got busy with a die grinder and ported the pickup side and the outlet to ensure maximum oil flow. Oh, also to make this thing work, we need to use some of these shims that came with our timing set, and that's to compensate for the extra thickness of that double roller. To fit the pump to the block, we remove the outer cover, then the geo rotor. Then after bolting the housing down loosely, Check for 2000s clearance between it and the driver all the way around. Then, with the feeler still in place, snug the mounting bolts down. Then reassemble the pump and replace the cover. Then remove the mounting bolts one at a time. Apply some red thread lock and torque them down to 18 foot-pounds. Now, this is a very important step because if the housing's not centered, well, the geo rotor will self destruct, metal grindings will get in the oil, and, well, the engine will be making strange noises again. Now, with the pump properly located, we can reinstall the windage tray and the pump pickup. Next, I'm going to loosely install this front cover. along with the harmonic balancer to center up the front seal. Now, after this, we can torque the front cover bolts to 18 foot-pounds. Hey, we're just about ready to bolt up that back cover, but before we do, uh, we need to reinstall this little oil control valve first. Now, I know this thing looks small, but it's very important because without it, well, you just don't have any oil pressure. Now, we're going to give it a little bit of oil to help it slide in place. We go. Now, you also want to make sure that the O-ring end goes in last. Now, we can bolt up the rear cover, the oil pan. Then, after rolling the engine over, we can install the valley pan. Hey, here's another tip that'll help you with the oil control on your LS1. You know, these lifter boxes keep a lot of oil trapped up inside them, especially at high RPM. So what I like to do is drill half-inch holes here on the side of the boxes. That'll let the oil drain back out and down in the pan, keep that stuff in circulation. That is an important tip. And here's another one for you. Better stick around, because after the break, we finish up the bullet on our LS gun. Welcome back to the shop where we're just about to finish up the engine buildup for our Project LS gun. Now, with the short block completed, hey, we're ready for these cylinder heads, which we also had sent out to the LS1 experts at Wheel to Wheel. Now, they've developed a CNC program that ports these heads so they'll flow 292 CFM with a 224cc port. They also installed new larger 202 intake and 157 exhaust valves and the new springs and retainers from Crane that I showed you earlier. Now, while they were at it, they also machined the heads back here to clear those big rockers. Well, I got the lifters and those modified boxes installed, but you know something? Since we're going to increase the cylinder pressure with a blower installation later, we're also adding a set of ARP studs. Now, here's an important tip for you. Make sure you blow out the head bolt holes to get rid of any fluids. Otherwise, when you install bolts or studs, those fluids will be compressed and you could crack your block. 
Now, to make sure we get a really good seal, we're going to use a set of these composition gaskets from Mr. Gaskets. Man, you're just right on time, <laughs> Chevy boy. Yes, <laughs> Here we go. Hey, I want to show you something. The stock LS1 uses a net lash rocker setup that we're replacing, of course, with our crane rollers. Now, this kit also comes with studs to make the rockers adjustable and guide plates, plus a set of new hardened push rods. Well, our intake comes from FASP. Now, it's called the LSX, and it's a modular design made of space-age composites. Now, check this out. It's been engineered to accept a larger-than-stock throttle body, plus it has dedicated bosses to accept nitrous nozzles. And here's the really cool part. The plenum volume has been increased by 25% over stock, so this thing will have absolutely no problem feeding a larger, higher RPM engine. Plus, the modular design allows us easy access for porting and other modifications. Of course, it's a direct bolt-on with provisions for the stock fuel rail, sensors, and brackets. Yeah, well, speaking of that, all I've got to do over here is remove the stock fuel rail, some brackets and sensors, and transfer them to the new intake. Well, this thing's really starting to look like an engine now, but it still looks a little ugly here. we got to come up with some cool valve covers for this thing. Man, I'm with you 100% on that. i got to admit, though, you know, I am kind of glad now that Mike did pop the motor doing those burnouts. Gave us a good excuse to get our hands on one of these things. Yeah, but you know, for a guy who cut his teeth on a traditional small block Chevy like I did, this thing's a real step forward. For instance, those six bolt mains, man, that bottom end is practically bulletproof. And those heads, they breathe like crazy. Yeah, well, the aluminum heads, aluminum block, and lightweight roller valve train are good examples of how new engine technology is lending itself to good old high performance. Yeah, but you know the best thing about all that aluminum? What? Well, it gives us a way to recycle all those Budweiser cans. No comment there, man. <laughs> Seriously, though, I can't wait to get this thing back in the Camaro in a couple of weeks. That way we can check out the real performance we're going to get out of this thing. Now, don't go anywhere, though. We're going to be back with more horsepower right after the break.